everybody and welcome back to the Blues Knot channel and as you can probably already tell I am actually not at home right now I am actually at San Jose Deer Dawn Station about to wait for the last train to get home I actually just got back from a school event that run all the way to around 9 30 and basically I'm about to take the last train home and I thought I want to do this now because there's still actually about 30 minutes before the train actually leave um, the train is actually not here yet though uh, so yeah um, today obviously we are going to be doing a preview of the San Jose earthquakes versus Orlando City and just like last week before I get into this preview I have to go back to the Howard Cummins situation because it looked like Howard Cummins basically did what exactly what Clint Dempsey and pretty much taste the same medicine that Clint Dempsey has has taste yes that's right he is suspended for one more game because of that dirty move and you know I talked about how you know the the discipline committee and how I understand why some people kind of are not happy with the discipline committee always tends to like just put an extra game in into another guy's suspension literally a couple of days before match they should have done it a little bit earlier but it is what it is and to be fair i really don't care if cummins is back in this game or not because really he is a guy that you know alongside with quantana i just have absolutely no trust in that defense and he is also going to be a guy that even if he's available for this game i would not put him in the starting 11. now speaking of this game like i said we're playing against orlando city and yeah i have absolutely no confidence coming into this eastern conference road trip this back-to-back -back eastern conference road trip between between uh, us and Orlando City and then after that we'll go to Columbus to play the crew and Orlando City is just firing on all cylinder right now ever since they started to get their guys back healthy this team had looked like a team that you kind of expect what they would be this season which is an all-in team doing doing what they do trying to make up for, for their poor start that they had this season and you know right now coming into this game especially with the way that we are right now I mean even though we did drew last time to stop our kind of mini two game losing streak this team is winless in four game this team hasn't won a single game since the Minnesota game and that game against Houston we should have clearly won that one but for whatever reason we literally just decide to stop defending in the second half and also the fact that we just cannot make a single pass at all to save our lives i mean it was just absolutely shocking and i said it last week how if we put on the same performance against orlando city we are gonna get absolutely slaughtered because orlando city has by far much more firepower than houston offers and speaking of that firepower of attack that Orlando City have let's talk about that and let's talk about the guys that we got to watch out in this game and obviously there is a lot of guys on that attack that we got to watch out for well the guy that we got to watch out for is Sasha Kleshton who is a very very good central attacking mid he has a very good vision of the attacker he can make pinpoint passes on any given day and we also gotta watch out for Jester Miram too he is also a, vi a guy that that pretty much have almost similar ability of Sasha Kleshton very good good on the ball and can pick out any attacker and also can go through on goal and finish himself but probably the guy that we got to watch out for and we're gonna definitely have a hands full against this guy it is obviously Dom Dwyer um, you know like him or hate him he is just an absolute force from that Orlando City attack he is just pretty much a bully I mean he can literally just run cross attacker with his strength and at times he can even do it do some dirty play too sometimes he can go into the area and just take a dive and try to earn him himself and his team a penalty that is exactly the guy that that he is and like I said like it or hate it it is the way it is he is a guy that definitely show passion every single game and 
You know, it's gonna be very interesting to see how in the world are we going to stop him, or if we can actually stop him, that's the thing. Now in terms, of course, the starting 11 that I wanna see in this game against Orlando City, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Now in the last game, Michael Starhe basically put out a 4-1-4-1 formation. It's the first time he actually changed the formation this season, and I just have a feeling that you probably need to do the same thing against Orlando City, but because I just feel like this 4-1-4-1 formation is just not gonna work against Orlando City. I mean, in the last game, it wasn't because of the fact that, you know, the 4-1-4-1 formation he picked was just absolutely awful and that it kind of affect our play it was really because our players just did not execute it at all i still think it was kind of the right call that he decided to go with the 4-1-4-1 formation but the problem is the player just could not execute that formation and in this game i'm gonna kind of change it up a little bit and i'm actually gonna go back to the free at the back formation well Actually, on paper, it's a free at the back formation, but if you actually see it, well, it's it's kind of like in the game, it's more of a five at the back formation. And this formation is a very similar formation that we run in the second half against Philly because I thought that in that second half against Philly, when we did switch to five at the back, it looked like the defense was more stabilized and it looked like our attack was much, much better than we were in that first half against Philly. So I'm, I think maybe we should do it again against Orlando City. And since Orlando City, you know, this team had just so, so many firepower up front, but the defense is kind of a little bit eeky, leaky at the back. I think we probably need to go at a five at the back and maybe trying to hit them on the counter attack and trying to hit their weakness, which of course is their defense. So in terms of course, this five at the back, we start in the goalkeeper position. It's going to be Andrew Tarbell, which is no surprise because that's pretty much the goalkeeper we're going to use every single week, even though he literally have zero distribution ball in his DNA. I mean, he is just absolutely horrendous in terms of distribution. But at least he has made a couple of very key saves to keep us in the game. So maybe that's a bonus. I mean, I guess we see the good of Andrew Tarbell and the absolute horrendous of Andrew Tarbell. Now, in terms, of course, the three at the back, I'm actually going to go with Youngworth, Alashe, and also Affolter. You know, I think Youngworth, when you saw in that Philly game and how he moved back in the center back role, the defense just immediately look a mile better now i do not know why in the world he was playing in that left back position i don't know why in the world michael sorry decided to just put him in the fullback position because he just does not look comfortable at all and it was evidenced by that second goal we concede where he just completely got burned by albert at least because he just have no pace at all in that fullback and he's really not a fullback so i don't know why he play in that formation but yeah he's gonna be there in one of the center back alashe you know in that game he had an okay game he had some good moments and then he had some bad moments and i think afflater was probably by far the best defender out of those four defender well both of those two center back out there. I think Affleter, you know, even though in I remember when he started that Club Leon game and how he looked absolutely dreadful, you know, against Houston, he actually looked very well. I, I didn't really have a lot of problem of him being there, even though he is a guy that hasn't usually start for us in that center back role, but he's going to be there again because there's just no way I'm going to see Quantana anywhere near in that center back row and then of course on the left back it is gonna be Salinas or I should say the left wing back and I know you probably think why in the world do I put Shea Salinas back there even though a couple of weeks ago I said he should not be near the starting level well it's because he's gonna be playing in that left wing back row and I thought last season when he played in that left wing back row he looked so much more comfortable than playing in that left back row because he can of course go go up front more and basically go on the attack more than 
he would be in that left back row and in that kind of four at the back kind of system. So he's going to be there. In the right wing back, it is going to be Nick Lima. Now in the holding midfield, I'm going to say it's going to be Godoy and also Jackson Yu. And because they're going to be two midfielder, you know what that means, guys. There's actually only going to be one striker in this game. But first, the two attacking midfielder is going to be Ericsson and also Vako. And then up front, it is going to be Danny Hooson. And yes, for the second game in a row, there is going to be no Chris Wondolowski. I think he's going to be coming off the bench as a super sub again. And really, I just think that that last game kind of say that, kind of proved that it is the end of the era for the the quakes a little bit it is kind of the end of the era of chris juan the starting game in and game out i think throughout this kind of first couple of game it is pretty clear that father time is starting to catch up to him and that he has to come off the bench and really be in that super sub row and he's been accepting it like he even openly said that i'm definitely fine with it as long as i put i always want to see what the team does bet best and if it just me not be in the starting 11 and me coming off the bench to try to make a big impact then I have no problem with that which is why I always think that Chris Wondolowski will forever be a San Jose earthquake legend he's going to be remembered for a very long time because not only he is just our all-time leading goal scorer he is a very classy guy uh, by what he just said last week I mean that's that's just pretty much shows you why every Quakes fan love Wando so much because of, of the, the all the class act and all the he always put the team first besides himself he always think the team is more important and I just wish more footballer these days are kind of like that but yeah that of course is the starting 11 for this game now in terms of course the prediction of this game I am not confident at all in terms of us coming into this one. You know, the last time we went to Orlando City, um, it was actually at the old Cetris Bowl. It was before when Orlando City Stadium was built. We actually got a 2-2 draw in that game. And I remember we actually got a late equalizer in that game to earn a huge point. So if we can do the same thing in this one, but not have to rely on a late equalizer like we did last time, then I'll be happy with it. I'll glad to walk out of Orlando City with a point and then head to Columbus potentially get all three points in that game on the row and yeah I mean that of course is my preview of this game let me know in the comments below what do you think is going to happen what's your starting 11 and the prediction for this game and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time